Hello, this is Dr. Mewborn, and this is Religion in the Public Square. We're looking at the topic today known as self-defense and gun control. Our outline, again, is by Wayne Grudem. Let's go ahead and jump into our study for today. Self-defense and gun control. Should governments prohibit private citizens from owning some or all kinds of guns? One of the questions we'll look at. Should people have rights to defend themselves against attacks? What kind of weapons can be used to defend oneself? I think a great illustration of this is found on a billboard, turn in your arms, the government will take care of you. And that didn't turn out too well for the Native Americans, and that's kind of what that billboard is proposing there. And, uh, and I'll share with you some more people in the future of this lesson that also really fought for gun control, and it caused great destruction on their countries when they, when they pushed it. But uh, the question is, is it right to defend ourselves and others from physical attacks? Is it right to do that? Um, Matthew 5, 38, 39 speaks about this. It says, but if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. What is this? This Christian passivism? Is that what this is? What is the point of this? Um, not to defend oneself? Is that what's going on? Uh, violence or possible homicide is not the issue in this passage. The word slap in this passage is a specific word for insult or jab. People should not retaliate with violence when somebody insults them. Instead, they should turn the cheek. And that's what Jesus is speaking of here. And Wayne Grudem does a great job kind of helping this, help us understand this passage a little bit more. And of course, these uh, Greek words in his book, Politics in the Bible. And so... Um, and so the whole focus there is not, um, it's not turning away when someone hurts you or tries to hurt your family. He's not saying that. He's saying if someone insults you, please be um, uh, Christian enough or to respond the right way with a Christian mindset to say, all right, I'm not going to retaliate in this, in this way. Um, you also see David flees from King Saul in order to save his life in 1 Samuel 19.10. He's running. He's getting away. He's protecting himself. He's not just letting the spear fly and, then, and, and he's not getting out of the way. So uh, he's fleeing that. And also Paul snuck away when his life was threatened. We see that happening. There was a time when Jesus was going to be arrested and he sneaks away as well. So you, you have a lot of this type of teaching and you have people protecting themselves or getting out of the line of fire, um, if we could say so figuratively. So that's kind of what's going on in this passage. So is it right to defend ourselves and others from physical attacks? Sure, uh, to pr protect others as much as we possibly can. Did Jesus teach to self-defense? Uh, I wanted to read this passage, Luke 22, verse 36 to 38. says, He said to them, But now let the one who has a money bag take it and likewise a knapsack. And let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors. Transgressors, For what is written about me has its fulfillment. And they said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. And he said to them, It is enough. And what Jesus is doing is ex explaining to them that his their calling uh, his calling on their lives is going to be a dangerous calling and that he might need to protect. They might need to protect themselves from certain things um, and, uh, and, and as they take the gospel forth. And so he actually tells them, if you don't have a sword, do what you need to do to get one. Um, and so we're going to kind of look at this as the next um, passage we're going to look at uh, where Peter has a sword and Peter cuts off the ear of the servant of the high priest. And so under this, is it right to defend ourselves and others from physical attacks? Well, that's Matthew 26, 47 through 46. And that's where um, Peter, where Jesus rebukes Peter for striking the servant of the high priest with a sword and of course cutting off his ear. But look at what you see in that passage. Jesus did not want a military uprising in Rome and he, for he was to be crucified. So what he did was instead of um, going forth and just saying, oh, it's okay, Peter. And he went and he healed the servant's ear, and he actually healed it in that moment. And I think it's one of the most incredible things. That's He did that because he knew he had to go to the cross. He knew he was going to be crucified. He knew that needed to happen. 
Number two, Jesus did not want to advance the kingdom of God by force. That's not how the kingdom of God, we don't, we don't enforce anything onto people. Um, I, one of the ways I like to say this is that as Christians, we're willing to die for our faith, but Christians should never kill for their faith. And so uh, maybe a, a decent way to understand what this is about. And that's why we can say like the Crusades were very, very wrong in many ways for just uh, fighting and killing people in the name of Jesus. Um, then third reason, third thing here, Jesus did not tell Peter to throw away his sword. Instead, he told him to put it back in its place. Where is the sword? Where, sh where should the sword be? It should be with Peter, but it should be back in its place at this specific time. But he didn't tell him to get rid of it. He just said, put it back in its place. I think those are some unique things to look at. Uh, Self-defense and gun control. Is it right for a person to use a weapon for self-defense? Luke 22, 36 and Matthew 26, 52 agree that sword is acceptable for self-defense. Is it right to use a gun for self-defense? Jesus encouraged self-defense protection from other people with swords. The same could be said for people with guns. Um, they didn't have guns at that time, so the sword was the way that people would attack people, um, and uh, or one of the ways that they would attack. And so today, it's more so along the lines of guns. A lot of the attacks that people see today are usually guns. Uh, also, a gun is a great equalizer for people of lesser strength, size, or ability. So if you have an 85-year-old woman who does not have the protection that she needs, or maybe it's a young lady or whatever it might be, the gun is very helpful in that. Or if somebody, if a group of people come at you, come into your home, home invasion, things like that, if it's a group of people, it would be uh, right to protect yourself also there with a gun as well. And so these are some of the, the main defenses on all of that type of stuff. I, I thought this was an interesting slide. And so the top line of people, these people stood for gun rights. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, Abraham Lincoln, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Martin Luther King, King Jr. Um, the bottom row of people, these people stood for gun control. King George III, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong, and then Kim Jong-il, and then also Barack Obama. Um, I'm not really sure that we should put Barack Obama, President Obama, in that bottom one just because these other guys were just so evil. But the whole point of these guys on the bottom, except for President Obama, was they were taking guns away because they wanted to control the people. They weren't trying to control guns. They were trying to control people and actually did and killed many, many people in the process. So very, very, very dangerous uh, what they were doing and just, just so evil. Um, let's continue on. Do gun control laws reduce gun crime. Absolutely not. Every major city in America that has strict gun laws is overrun with gun crimes. It does not fix. Strict gun laws seem to have little to no effect on crime rates. In most cases, the gun crimes have increased in areas with strict gun laws. Well, what does the Second Amendment actually say? A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed. And so this amendment has been on attack, it has been attacked for years now, especially with all the crimes that are happening um, with uh, school shootings and just public shootings in general. And so what they're saying is we need stricter gun laws. We need to fix our problems. And the best way to do that is control guns or take guns away from people. But actually the Second Amendment says here that we are allowed to be able to protect ourselves um, from tyranny. We're able to protect ourselves um, from a government takeover. Uh, and that means that a militia, we can all be part of a militia. That just simply means armed individuals fighting against maybe tyranny or something like that. Um, and so we have the right to do that, to keep and to bear arms. And that's what we're allowed to do. So if you start taking this away, well, then, they're gonna, then there's a push towards taking 
the First Amendment away, where you don't have the right to worship the way that you want to or speak the way that you want to because it's controlling people. It's not controlling guns. There's there's no such thing as really controlling guns in a, um, in, in any form or fashion. They're not what needs controlling. It's people. And uh, so what's happening is, is that by taking away guns, you're not really doing anything but just trying to control people. Um, I thought this was a great slide to kind of talk through. These two rifles have identical firepower. Same ammunition, same velocity, same rate of fire, same capacity, different looks. The assault weapons ban will ban only one of them. It's not about firepower or safety or unusually dangerous weapons. It's about fooling you into thinking something is being done about gun violence. These rifles right here are called uh, 223 rifles or mini 14s. Um, it's a deer rifle is what it is. It's that bottom one. I've actually shot that before that type of gun before many times. I've shot the one on the top as well, but um, I've shot both of these guns. They're both what are called semi-automatic weapons. And semi-automatic weapons are legal. Any handgun is a semi-automatic weapon. It only fires when you pull the trigger. So it only fires as fast as you pull the trigger. So it's one pull, one fire, one uh, bullet goes out. Not like a machine gun. Machine guns are outlawed. They are, Americans cannot have machine guns. And so it's really all based on trying, like scare tactics is what's going on here. Um, but two, two rifles have identical firepower here. Um, I, I do think it's important though that, that there are specific gun laws that are given and maybe better if you want to look at who can get a gun, well, let's be very careful about that, making sure background checks are done well. And if there can be approved process on that, maybe looking into that more, I think that's definitely something you can look at. But I definitely think we have a good program now. The only thing that is not in our program now is people being trained, um, young kids knowing what they're doing. We got a lot of fatherless families or even parentless type families that they, these kids just run wild and they grab a gun and they just go and. Um, it's because they have not been raised correctly, and that's we know that's one of the biggest issues here. Let me help you understand this as well. This is interesting. The word AR, what does it stand for? Does it stand for assault rifle? No. Does it stand for automatic rifle? No. AR stands for Armalite rifle. Armalite is just a type of a designer, an engineer company that actually came up with this light um weight gun and light arms type of gun and so that's what it's called an armalite rifle it's not an assault rifle it's you can't really call anything assault just because it exists or it looks scary that's like calling a knife an assault knife or calling a rock that looks a little jagged a little rough calling it assault rock it just doesn't make a lot of sense and so calling something an assault rifle is really uh, uh, it's messing up the terms a little bit so we got to be more balanced in how we talk about these things and so um, and so we definitely have to be aware of what's going on uh, um, in the world today with these types of things because if you're not in the know or you don't understand these definitions it won't be long before you get swayed into believing all types of things. And so you got to consider this type of stuff. Um, and, uh, and definitely I'll, I enjoy the conversation about these things. I think it's important for us to, to talk it out. As we continue on, um, laws should guarantee that citizens have the right to possess some kind of effective means of self-defense. That's kind of getting back to Wayne Grudem's book um, on politics. He's saying they should have an ability to protect themselves and have self-defense. In the United States, the right of citizens to own guns for the purpose of self-defense should be protected by the laws, or by, yeah, by laws themselves. And also, governments should place reasonable restrictions on gun ownership. So not everybody should own guns. Nobody believes that, um, especially if somebody has a mental illness or disorder they should never be able to have guns, and that should be uh, that should definitely be be a part of of the system, and it, it is part of the system. So, um, so those are some important things. The way that Wayne Grudem ends this portion of this chapter is the importance of the issue. The 
The Second Amendment is valid and relevant for today. The Second Amendment allows for basic human rights, such as the right to self-defense. The Second Amendment allows American citizens to protect themselves against tyranny. And then also gun ownership is a significant deterrent to violent, violent crime. Uh, which is definitely proven um, in many ways. Actually, in places where there's uh, stricter gun laws, it's in those places that there's a higher rate of crime. So that's kind of what this uh, topic is all about. It's been the Religion of the Public Square, Self-Defense, and Gun Control. Our outline given to us by Wayne Grudel. Good to be with you today. Have a great rest of the day.